This video is brought to you by Sakura Co. And this figure is way more than a third party Gundam. It's weird to say that word without getting sexually harassed. <laughs> Hey, my name is Javi, and we're looking at the Mosho Toys Takeda Shingen, a giant samurai robot that's based on a real dude. Takeda Shingen was also the name of a daimyo who wore a set of armor that looks, hmm, kind of familiar. And he was one of the most powerful warlords during the Sengoku period of Japan. And speaking of Japan, get a taste of it with today's sponsor, Sakura Ko. Sakura Ko is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of authentic, traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local art and snack makers delivered straight from Japan to your door. Their boxes have a different theme every month, with this one being the March box, where the theme is Sakura afternoon tea. But Gabby, it's February. Enough. You get March's theme if you order in February, April's theme if you order in March, and so on and so on. And don't worry if you don't know what any of this stuff is. There's a nice little booklet explaining every snack included, which also has a lot of information about Japanese culture. <coughs> You had me at shrimp and crab. I love me some sea bugs. Oh, ooh, it smells like my ex-wife. That's really good. Mmm. Tastes like my ex-wife. So use code JABI to get $5 off your first order. So take a bite out of Japan today. And thank you, Sakura Ko, again for supporting the channel. There's no implication that I'm being forced to do this for money. I genuinely love this shit. I would say the box looks awesome. Some incredible photos on here. But why is my particular box so fricked up? It's even got a hole in it. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's a review sample? I got this for free, by the way. Also, you could tell by the old background, I was supposed to review this thing during the Sengoku period of Japan. I actually unboxed this thing on stream. Subscribe to Jobby 2 Apologies to the store that's in the description. And if you decide to pick one up for yourself, I guarantee that your box will not look like it just came out of Compton. <laughs> Their packaging is always on point to an almost annoying degree. It's also still up for pre-order, so I'm not late. Worth it. And immediately getting him out of the box, his crotch was fractured. Good shit. I got that replaced. Attach the shoulder armor and the painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing. A giant mech based on a violent warlord might not be everyone's cup of tea from Japan, from Sakura Ko, but it sure as heck is mine. I love this design. Such an incredible concept and the execution is pretty much flawless. Nothing throughout the figure looks hand painted, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Hand painting definitely has its place, but I refuse to believe that a human hand can be this clean with paint applications. All the minute details from the little panel lines, the rivets, the gold parts that just pop look machined to perfection. But I could be wrong about the hand painting thing, depends on how hard they whip the kids. You wanna talk about clean? Take a look at these decals, decals! Potential model kit builders need to know how this was done. Despite how tiny they are, they're 100% readable. Kai Province Taiga, which is a reference to the real Takeda Shingen's cute nickname, the Tiger of Kai. Why is Japanese history so... Epic! Can America get a mobile suit based on Ronald Reagan? <laughs> Takeda Shingen Zero Two! Hold up. Red Robot Zero Two. Now, where have I heard that before? Darling in the Franks. And speaking of anime and Japanese culture, you get a nice envelope, envelope, however you pronounce it, which contains this highly detailed instruction booklet. There's a lot of pages dedicated to the figure and its accessories, but more than half of the thickness is manga that reads from left to right. Heresy. I suppose the pilot of the Takeda Shingen is this lovely thing. I bet the real Takeda Shingen would come Mitsudoku. I'm sure this is very funny and amusing in titties, but I don't care. Anime fucking gay LMAO. I'm pretty sure that there's paint on almost every surface on the figure. There's nothing here to indicate that bare plastic finish. Usually I wouldn't like that results in heavy paint chipping, but even after handling this guy a lot, there hasn't been any significant amount of paint chipping. Once again, potential model kit builders need to know what top coat this is. $5 Krylon at Walmart? What do 
I care. I don't do that anymore. Grab him by the tiger. Wacky, over the top, and yet another reason why it's not completely fair to call this a third party Gundam. We're way out of Gundam territory by now. This is some Brave Series shit. Leave a like for the Brave Series, you fucking weebs. Would have been really cool if the mouth could open in some way to maybe Vor, a pilot waifu minifigure. Jaffy! You don't like minifigures! For Transformers, you donut. Transformers don't need no humans, but for a mech with a canonical pilot, it's a nice bonus. And why the hell do you care? You don't even like non Transformers. I just like being right. It would have also been cool if these clear green eyes could light up. Because the eyes in the actual head can. Ah, shit! No rubberized parts at all, by the way. You want to be careful not to snap these off. Open up the head, remove his brains, and I gotta give the biggest props to Mosho Toys. They freaking tell you what kind of batteries you need. A pair of AG4s. I don't see that often. And if you get them installed, which is kind of a bitch, I recommend you squeeze them in. Push that green forehead camera, if we're going by Gundam logic. And that looks epic. But it still looks really good, even if you turn them off. They took the time to paint his eyes green. Good shit. And the head sculpt itself is great. Again, less like a Gundam and more like Gaugaiga. Feeling really brave today. And if we unplug the back of the head, that gives him a little bald spot. And if your hair's going, wrong sponsor, flip up the fin, and this included hair piece plugs in. Locks in pretty solidly, too. Directly inspired by the real Takeda Shingen's armor, but with the red gradient looking like it's glowing, this also looks like a series finale power-up. Genishi Gaugaiga! By the way, I have watched Gaugaigar at this point. Oh shit, too much moko de gorilla. This weave isn't the only accessory you get. Far from it. The hands are detachable, but instead of popping off at a ball joint, it's a tiny clip. I've had many bad experiences with other figures where I pull off something from a clip and the clip actually snaps in half. Wish this thing was made out of die-cast metal or something, but so far they seem sturdy enough. You can switch out his fist for a pair of open hands, relaxed hands, another pair of open hands with the thumbs up, grabby hands, angled grabby hands and a pair of trigger finger hands. You know, at this scale, couldn't they have just given him fully articulated hands? Optus Pexus did it, and he's smaller. I keep bringing that guy up recently. Might as well marry him. What's a samurai warrior? Without a pair of sushi knives. I'm racist. Unsheathing the swords is super satisfying, and they clip back on when not in use. I recommend heating up the trigger finger hands a little bit. Makes getting the swords in there easier. The only word that comes to my mind is epic. My mind is quite empty. And you get this big ass sheath, which of course contains a big ass sword. Undeniably <laughs> impressive. But this big sword is just an upscaled version of the smaller sword. Still looks good, but a missed opportunity to give this big guy a unique blade and or hilt design. Maybe a Japanese wall scroll stylized tiger going throughout the blade. Or a big titty anime waifu. And I gotta emphasize, these things are huge. Even in my hand, it looks it's like I can fucking touch you with it. Three swords, whoop de doo but where can you put them? Besides the obvious. In his hands, you freak. You get this adapter. That clips onto the sheath of the big sword, and you can remove this very well-hidden back panel. Don't lose it. Plug that in, and you know I like me some weapon storage. That's what we're here. But it don't stop there. You get a bunch of thingies, some assembly is required, and plug them into these die-cast metal joints. Of course, I know that because of how they look and feel. Pins joint, pins joint, swivel. Slide in any of the two short swords, and this whole thing plugs in to the side skirts. That is hot as hell. But you could also combine these hip clips using this die cast metal crank joint. Rotation, of course. And now he can store two swords on one skirt. Really cool and epic! But I prefer the separate storage. And if you thought the swords were long, wait till you see my dick. It's as big as I want it to be.
Schrodinger's cock. Big old axe and big old spear. Diecast metal handles. To attach them, you gotta remove the tip, and this rod goes straight into his standard grabby hand, which has a tighter grip. Put the tip back on, and you gotta love oversized weapons on an oversized figure. Painting and sculpting on these things is really good as well. But if the amazing axe or the sensational spear are too big for you, you fucker, you could adjust the height, either by switching their tips or bringing in this random diecast metal rod. It's got no end tip. Thought it'd be as easy as detaching the ends from the long boys. But nah, no matter how hard I pull, it won't get off. Like me. Completely numb down there. And for yet another option, you can detach any of the axe's blades, but you only need one. Get the spear, unplug one of the pointy bits, <laughs> replace that with an axe blade, and that extra pointy bit plugs into the other axe. Double axes, and of course he can dual wield. I do prefer that he dual wield short axes, but it doesn't look complete without an end tip. If these can be removed, then I'm just missing something, and you happen to know, leave it down in the comments. I'll become the freaking king of England for this shit. And we're not done with the long boys. Let's bring back this big sword and carefully detach the blade. The peg is scarily thin. Remove any of the weapon tips, not from here, but from here, and you can plug in this disembodied blade. That's way too tight. I actually don't want to stick it all the way in. Which is what I said to your mom. You can most likely fix that by shaving your mom some material off, but it doesn't look any less a true weapon of mass destruction. Definitely wouldn't let you in an airport with this. They won't let me in the airport in general. And that's all for the weapons, but not for the accessories. Check out this base. Nice and hefty with the significantly cold surface. Perfect fit for a figure of this size. It's got some printed on panel lines along with the Takeda Shingen crest, but no actual sculpted in detail. It's completely flat, but that's on purpose. And considering how massive this thing is, it's another missed opportunity to have accessory storage at the bottom of the base. Because without that, most of the accessories are just loose bits. But at the bottom of Takeda Shingen's feet, you'll notice that they're really fucking sexy. Ah! Diecast metal. Magnets. He can magnetize onto the base. This is way better than a bad item at Nation's Act 5 stand. This just opens up so much posing possibilities. And we'll get there, don't worry. The magnets are pretty freaking strong. Don't get him near any electronics. I say that as his foot is pointing directly directly at my very expensive camera. What could possibly go wrong, right? Okay. The magnets attach so strongly to the base that they kind of just pop out of the foot. Fuck. I think a bit of super glue should fix that. But until then, I can't get it off! What if I... Come on. Oh, almost! Oh! Big brain! <laughs> I don't recommend you hold the figure like that because... Ah! Fuck! Yeah. The base would have been enough for me. No base at all would have been fine too. The figure stands up perfectly fine on its own. But here's some more shit. A dedicated stand, also with magnets, and a die-cast metal rod. Just get that... Uh... Oh. Remove the tank cover and put it in his... If it's nice and snug. TBH, I would have preferred some kind of articulated stand, but no big deal, you could get creative. And out of all of the options you get here, it's kind of weird that there's no weapon storage for the staff weapons. The swords get all those previously mentioned holsters, and even the dedicated display stand, which could hold only two swords for some reason, also has magnets. These long boys don't get that love. Nowhere to hook them onto the figure, and no way to hook them onto the stand. Missed opportunity. Would have been so cool if you could display it with all of the weapons. But life finds a way. Holding both staff, carrying all of his swords, armed to the mother flippin' saber teeth. As you can imagine, I had to handle this guy a ton to get him in all of those poses. Did I fucking do it again? Had a fun time doing it. He feels hefty and chunky. Most of the plastic is durable. All the joints here, thanks to a die-cast metal frame, make the joints feel super solid. It's also pretty dang heavy for a toy. The magnets on his feet did not fuck up my scale, Kamisama Arigato. Having a dang good time until you get to all his armor bits. The shoulder armor and the side skirts are a bit too thin for my taste.
Case in point. That just snaps back on, no worries. They look great, of course, but it feels like with one good squeeze, I could snap these things in half. And the actual connection to the figure is pretty floppy. So unfortunately, not the most fun to handle. Ironically, the crotch guard is super thick, so that took some effort to crack. Good shit. It's possible to get these armor parts out of the way, leaving you just with the base figure, which is beautifully fun to pose. Ball joint at the head and the base of the neck lets him look up and down pretty far. But if that's not enough for you, you can extend the neck. I don't like it. But it allows for an insane amount of head posability and some beautiful side to side. Every ball joint can be a swivel. Swivel at the shoulder armor. I'll just take that off. It'll make my life easier. You get a hinge joint, hinge joint, a ball joint, ball joint, ball joint, and every ball joint can be a very squeaky swivel. Allows the armor to move out, curl in, side to side, and the shoulder pad's got a hinge joint and a slight swivel. Hinge joint, hinge joint on either side of the shoulder pad. A random flap. Full rotation at the shoulder. And and a disappointing butterfly joint, but no worries. Go to the back and detach the back muscles for an even deeper butterfly joint. It's in the instructions. Now here it is from the front. Giga Chad. The base of the shoulder can move out, and the base of the arm can move out even more. This shoulder pad likes to fall apart for some reason. Definitely getting hot glued later. Bicep swivel. Double bend at the elbow. Feels like it stuck. Fuck. The right arm works perfectly. Love the pistons, the shifting pieces. But now I gotta take the left arm apart to see what's blocking that joint. Great. Hidden's joint here. Here's another angle. Ball joint at the wrist. Every ball joint can be. And the previously mentioned clip is also a hinge joint. The torso can move side to side. Got an arching back due to this waist hinge joint. And then an amazing goddamn crunch, which reveals some fantastic spine detail. Oh, I could just crunch this thing for hours. Gonna have some rock hard abs. Unlike me, I only got a rock hard liver. Swivel here. Spring loaded crotch. Relatable. God help you if this thing ever comes off. That springs all the way in Africa by now. Uh. Front skirts move up, and this sort of crank joint, ball joint, ball joint, allows it to shift up. Ball jointed butt skirts. Be cautious with them because they can crack, and they did. Got that replaced too. Hidden's joint here, which puts a nice little bow on the ass, but we're far from done. Hidden's joint here, and there's another hidden's joint there that allows all of that to shift. Up. And rotating the ball joint all the way up gets you a clearer look at the side skirt joints. You could also reference the instructions. Hinge joint, hinge joint. They can move out another hinge joint and the rotation. They can really get out of the way for this. Oh shit, really good kick. However, you can swing the whole hip assembly down, which gets you an even better kick. And you know there's a Beautiful spread. Uh, thigh swivel. Double bend at the knee. That's just an orgy of shifting parts. Even that thigh panel shifts down. Let's look at that again. Uh, the ankle guard has a hinge joint, hinge joint, and the... Uh, swivel? And an ocean of thick, sturdy joints. What the hell is this? And again, one good squeeze, and this thing will snap in half. <sighs> Anyway, up and down at the ankle. And when you move that, the back of the leg shifts up and down. Tiny little hinge joint, just because. The mid foot can move up and down. But check this out. You can extend the foot for an insane toe bend. Moves down again. And a more normal toe bend. And that looks like you got mauled by a tiger. Slight swivel here. And if you remove the foot, there looks like there's another hinge joint there. But it won't budge. And finally, a beautiful ankle pivot. Absolutely amazing. Amazing articulation. Those non-transforming transformers I looked at could learn a thing or two. And a great set of instructions. Although I would have preferred a full joint breakdown. I also would have preferred if the armor didn't suck. Size doesn't matter, I should know. But this design wouldn't have the same impact if he wasn't big. Size comparison time. Here's Figma Modic Economy. SH Monster Arts Godzilla. Transform Element OP Leader. My previous review, the 30MDLX Bumblebee. And another other giant robot with cat head tits. The Post Plus Gao Gai Gar. Let me know. Let me really know if you want that review. Cause right now, I don't believe you missed the anniversary by that much. And I would have brought out my gun plus stuff, but they're in hell. That part of me is over. You should know this by now. No more Gundam.
seriously, where the hell is that guy? If you want a hyper stylized, hyper accessorized, hyper expensive giant robot, I recommend this guy 100%. And that score is a little too close to the Robosan Optimus Prime that I looked at for Christmas. I'll just amend that review to a 5 out of 5. Fuck it. Yes, I can just do that. It's my channel. Fuck you. For my next review. You missed the royalty-free jazz by now, right?